guys welcome to my channel today's video will be part one of a three-part series on how to make a wedding gown from start to finish if you're interested in this video or video similar to this then hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications i post weekly on wednesdays and saturdays and without further ado let's get to the video okay so these are the designs that i came up with they're both similar. Um, one has a corset back and the other one has a button up. I think I'm gonna go with the one with the button up and still have the train like this one has with the with the gore on the center back. Um, based off my designs, the measurements I need to take are as follows. I need to do bust, waist, the low hips, the high hips, Bust to waist, waist to floor, waist to the bottom of the train, waist to the point of flare, and arm circumference. Those are, these are big ones. And clip to the center, clip to the top, and clip to the arm. Okay, so now that we know what measurements we need to take, let's go ahead and get started with the measurements. What you're going to need to take the measurements are just a simple um, measuring tape. I just want to start this part by saying that the measurements I'm taking from this point forward are strictly for if you are drafting your pattern from scratch. If you're using a ready-made pattern, um, all the measurements you really need to take are your bust, your waist, and your um, your hip. Uh, also, your uh, waist to floor, that's important as well. But the apex to apex and all this other uh, measurements are strictly for if you're drafting a pattern, which I will make an in-depth video about that um, coming up pretty soon here after I finish the How to Make Your Wedding Dress series. Okay? I like to use centimeters uh, because I feel like centimeters are more exact than using inches. But personal preference, do. Okay, so according to my measurements that I need to take that I wrote down, I need to take my bust measurement, which, I mean, that's self-explanatory. Which is about 87. I need to take the waist, which luckily on the dress form, the waist is marked. But if it if you're taking your own measurements, the waist would be the smallest part of, of your um, abdomen area. Low hips would be the, the fullest part of your hips, so the, the widest part. Another important thing is when you're using a dress form and you're measuring to the where the tape is, always know either you're measuring to the top or you're measuring to the bottom. You don't want to switch it because then your measurements will be off. Next measurement will be waist to floor. Now I know you can't see the floor here, but the floor is different for everyone. Um, the floor would be your the finished height when you have your shoes on as well. So, so I'm going to go ahead and get that. Okay, so the next measurement I'm taking would be waist to the point of flare. Since this gown is a mermaid trumpet style, um, it fits and then it flares out. So what I need to find is my waist to the point where it's going to start to flare. So on her, from the waist, which I started measuring from the top, so that's what I want to do consistently, I want my flare to be around here. So that is about 38 centimeters. For this design, this is pretty much all that we're needing um, measurement wise. I'm going to go ahead and clean up and we're going to start altering our pattern. So what you're going to need when you're starting to do this is the pattern that you're using as a starting point, your designs, I'm going to combine them too, the measurements that you've taken off yourself or your dress form. I prefer a see-through ruler and some sort of French curve, a pencil, and a sharpener if, you, if your pencil is a regular pencil like mine, paper, scissors, a roll of tracing paper, 
a larger roll of thicker tracing paper. Um, I believe it's called vellum. Don't, don't quote me. Today I have about three yards of 118 or 300 centimeter wide muslin. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we are using a pattern that's already ready made. All you need to do is go on the back of it and usually on the flap there are measurements. You just go and you look and you find your corresponding measurement. You take your measurements that you have here that you've taken and match them up with the measurements on here, which, okay, I have a bust of 87, 87 centimeters. So here, 87 centimeter bust, 67. So the waist would be a little bit bigger on the pattern, which is fine. And the hips also bigger. So I know that I need to go ahead and trace a size 12. So that's what I'm gonna do. So for the front pieces, um, you want to find what your size is. You can see through this paper pretty nicely. You want to find your size and you just want to trace around it. And the reason why I trace around it instead of cutting it out is because I know I'm going to make this in multiple sizes and I don't want to have to grade it up or grade it down myself. I just want to always have the pattern intact. Okay, so for this, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and trace it. Now, I feel like it is very important for you to transfer over your notches. That's important. Go ahead and go through your pattern and find anywhere where there's a notch and also your waistline. Now, not all pattern pieces have the waistline marked. I know for this particular pattern, it's marked on the center front and the center back. But I know that where these dots are here, is my waistline. So I will go ahead and draw a line through that. If you hear any noise in the background, that is my children in the living room. Okay, so now I know that is my waistline. Now that we have our standard drawn, uh, standard pattern drawn, now let's refer back to not only our design, but our measurements as well. Now, this is my design which is pretty similar to this. It's a sweetheart neckline um, gown, but the difference between this and the pattern is that there is an illusion piece here that is higher up. Now there's, it's higher up on the back than this pattern piece is, and it also has the sleeves. So I know here that this will not be high enough for me to be able to go ahead and put our sleeves and have the illusion back. So what I did was, when I made the pattern originally is, okay. What I did was go ahead and measure on the dress form what the, the height of it should be because I know that this just dips down to my waistline. So I measured from my waist up onto the where I wanted it to stop on my back. And that was about five inches or 13 centimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I'm sorry if I'm out of frame, I cannot see. I'm gonna add that following the line, how it's already curved. I'm gonna just go ahead and follow it because it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a shape because when we do a fitting, we try it on ourselves, so we try it on a dress form, it's when we're gonna go ahead and alter the shape. So for now, I'm just gonna draw a line there. Now, um, you're gonna do the same thing for the center back piece as well. So just the center front is just the side back and the center back pieces are going to get this panel extended onto it. Draw the front the pieces, the front pattern pieces 
exactly how they are on the pattern. Now, we also took a measurement to, for the point of flare from the waist, which is, which is 38 centimeters. So I'm measuring from my waist down to where the point of flare should be, and luckily it's exactly what I need it to be. So we're not gonna go ahead and mess with that because it's exact. So go ahead and do that with all your pieces. Don't forget to mark your notches, mark your waistline, and label what the piece should be. And when you've done that, come back. Okay, I have all of my pattern pieces drawn out. I've extended both my center back and my side back. Um, after, I've, after I did this, I realized that I needed to extend it a little bit more. So I extended it around um, 10 inches. That's that, and obviously 10 inches as well on the center back piece. So let me go ahead and get my muslin ready and I will be back. note before we go ahead and, and start it's important to know that when you get fabric on a bolt when you buy it from Joann's wherever it has a fold in it but that fold is not always on grain so what you want to do is make sure this is really white muslin you want to make sure that you're going here and making sure that these pieces the ends the salvages are lined up to make sure that um, the fold is actually on grain mine is I've already done that so let me go ahead and you might want to press out your muslin too before you start but i've already made my mock-up and made my pattern and everything this is just um this is just for instructional purposes only so i'm not going to go ahead and press it okay when i'm laying out my pattern pieces i try to lay them out in the most um, fabric friendly way as possible Meaning, I want to use the least amount of fabric, but still get all of my pieces. So with most of my patterns, I usually put the center front because we know, obviously, that needs to be on the fold. So I'll go ahead and lay out the center front. And then, nine times out of ten, my side back will fit going the opposite way. Will fit going the opposite way on the piece and I would just keep um, lining them up like that this is a really wide fabric so I can fit them all on the width of this fabric but um, for fabric that is regular like, um, you would want to do the same thing going down okay so what you want to do now is go ahead I, I rather trace around the pattern pieces and then cut them out that way I don't pin this uh, tracing paper to my muslin just because the tracing paper tends to rip and it, it, it just, it's just a mess. So I like to trace around and cut it out. So go ahead and do that. So go ahead and trace the pattern piece out, all the pattern pieces, cut them out, sew your, sew your mock-up, fit your mock-up, and then come back for the next step. When you're sewing your mock-up, you want to make sure that your machine is set to the widest stitch possible because it makes it so much easier for you to go ahead and take it out. Now, mind you, this is a small piece just for, um, so I can show you how to alter the back for the illusion panel, but this would be your full your full on mock-up. You could pin this. I would pin this if I was using a, um, if I was actually sewing the whole mock-up, but this is just such a small piece. I'm not gonna even bother pinning it. For my pattern, I'm sewing at five eighths of an inch um, seam allowance, according to the, the instructions on the, the envelope. I don't bother ironing because 
it's just temporary. We're gonna put it together really quick and take it take it apart even quicker. So let's go ahead and move over to the mannequin so we can see how to fit the back piece. Okay, now I'm 100% sure your piece will fit on your dress form or yourself better than my piece. Um, like I explained earlier, the smallest size I had was a size 14 in that pattern and this is a size six dress form, so yeah. So what I like to do is just go ahead and draw my center back, which that is ridiculous. Draw my center back so I know where my center back line is this is pretty rough, mind you. Now you would do this. You would start altering the back piece after um, you've already fit the actual um, mock-up. So you fit the mock-up, you um, traced all the seams, and I traced where my stitch line actually needs to be. I took it back to the sewing machine. I sew on that new stitch line and I put it back on the mannequin. That's where we're at right now. So I know, based off my design, that from the front it's going to look like a sweetheart neckline. I know in the back we need to have some sort of bridge up here because we have a, a off the shoulder kind of strap and you have to have a bridge kind of thing that holds the that hides a piece of boning to keep that up so that when you move your arm excuse the backwards arm I'm just trying to make a point here but so when you move your arm up and down there's no restriction and movement from that sleeve. That's why you want to make sure that you're putting this bridge up here high enough to where you can move your arm. So my suggestion is try this on when it's all, all said and done. Try it on, pin a temporary sleeve and move your arm up and down to make sure that you, you're not restricting your range of motion from your sleeve. So I'm gonna draw it up to the point. I think this, this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead. I know that my back goes something similar to this for my design. And I know that some of this will be, I know that some of this will be the illusion panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave this how it is now and I'm gonna trim. I'm going to trim off the extra pieces of fabric because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to pin that so it doesn't flap on me everywhere. Obviously, your piece will be fitted better than this, but I, this is just for it. Just to show you how to do the back. Okay? So I know that some of this will be the illusion panel. So I have to make a decision. I know that it's going to, the, it's going to end here at the waist. So I'm gonna kind of just draw a line. And I know I need some um, face fabric here to cover that boning that we need to go ahead and put in there. So I'm gonna do sort of that kind of thing. So I know this piece will be part of my main pattern, which is obviously connected to the rest of it. And this piece here will be cut out of illusion. Okay, so once you're done with your mock-up, you fitted it, you've done the back piece, what you wanna do is disassemble the whole mock-up and iron all the pieces out. Once you iron all the pieces out, you want to cut your center back and your side back pieces at the waistline. You wanna separate that top half from the bottom half and go ahead and give that a good press as well. And after that, um, you want to go ahead and separate on that line that you created the face piece from the piece that's going to be illusion. You want to go ahead and separate that. Those would be two separate pattern pieces uh, when it comes to making the pattern. So go ahead and do that and come back. After you've separated all of the pattern pieces and everything is ironed, everything is done, every, all this, the extra seam allowances and everything are cut off, you want to go ahead and get out your vellum, which is the thicker tracing paper. You want to lay it over each pattern piece and trace each piece out 
Don't forget to mark your waistline and your notches as well. And those will serve as your final pattern pieces. 